More on the genetic fallacy. Uh, hi, Adam Zenz here. I realized that there was a, a portion, actually two two times really, where Owe um, refers to the source of the criticism that we cannot derive logically a command or an imperative or an, or an ought in quotes from an is or a factual descriptive statement about something just going on whether it's in the human soul or human nature or out there in the wild for example observing animals um, like on the National Geographic Channel or something um, that there was a um, a ref two references to the notion that David Hume would be a non-Christian uh, philosopher, and therefore, why would a theist? How could a theist use that? Well, that's that may be um, illustrative. That that may be a slight misperception on your part. Um, theists can use atheist arguments to make their points, and atheists can turn it right around. As a matter of fact, atheists do that all the time. They'll take, yeah, atheists will pick on, let's say, a televangelist or a, a popular preacher, somebody like Joel Osteen. They'll take a, a statement, and they'll use that to bolster their own non-belief in God. It's actually quite common. Um, it's all over the internet, too, uh, always, so I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that's not news to you. <laughs> um, and, and if it is, just do a, a Google search, and you can find lots of uh, fallacies that popular uh, and, maybe, and scholarly uh, preachers commit uh, behind the pulpit or in writing. Um, so those could be used to support a non-theistic framework just as well as um, theists could certainly use a and, and have. Uh, a good example for uh, theists would be the Christian presuppositionalist uh, philosopher um, and um, Professor, I believe, uh, Greg, the late Greg Bonson. He he um, employed the argument of both David Hume and was sort of further amplified or developed by the the secular um, atheist philosopher Bertrand Russell. And he he used the notion that we couldn't establish a definite uh, causal relationship between. Um, a two events that followed one upon the other. So one, so A would follow upon the heels of. Uh, sorry, B would follow upon the heels of A. Uh, therefore, we could not demonstrate um, necessarily that this there was a causal connection, but our mind had a way of attributing uh, causality to B following upon A, and therefore we would conclude, oh well, A was the cause of B. And Hume showed how fallacious that is, and and Bertrand. Russell um, enhanced uh, Hume's argumentation on that point, and then the Christian philosopher uh, uh, Greg Bonson comes along and applies that and shows that, yes, the, even the scientific method um, cannot, without God, say uh, that they can determine causality, uh, B from A. They actually need um, an orderly framework, which would be provided um by a uh, the a transcendental God in order for there to to be uh, to make sense of causality to even attribute um, B to um, to A um, and even then one could I think even looking at Greg Bonson's argumentation one could say well the human mind I mean going back to Hume the human mind is still pretty easily deceived we can still whether or not we're operating from theism or non-theism we can certainly make a make a mistake of judgment and say well a cause B and in fact there are other factors involved that we <laughs> we just were not aware of at the time and that uh, that come into our consciousness upon further investigation